fans, hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is, yet and again, Decode Your Reality. And I'm mixing it up a little bit on this one rather than just giving you a flat out presentation on something specific, which I will do anyway. I decided to go about asking you other fellow decoders, what do you see based upon what I'm presenting here? Obviously I have a lot of stuff going on. I've added a few things. Now if you, partake, if you uh, partook in what I posted yesterday asking what do you see, I've got some great responses from all of you and I appreciate all those. I'm very grateful for your contribution. You guys are all amazing. You guys have all great stuff in here. And it allows, you know, allows me as a decoder to go further. It allows you to go further. So I appreciate that. But, you know, I, I decided um, to ask you guys first to get these answers and then it gives me a chance to really give you a better presentation, you know, based upon your responses. So I really started out with decoding the word serpent. And that's how I got started on this entire what do you see aspect. And it just came to me. I just decode serpent. I don't know why. You know, I was just on one of those lines, man. You know how you just get in those zones? Things just start coming to you and start connecting. You guys know what I'm talking about. But just, I thought this was, this absolutely was mind-blowing the way Serpent shows up in our reality using multiple modalities. I'm using Gematria, the Tarot, Science. You guys all know my system. And I'm continually adding to it. But I want to digress here and just say, you know, who decided upon the word Serpent? You know, back in the day when they made the English language and all these words started to come out, who was the person responsible for choosing the word serpent? Was there any divine interaction when choosing that word? I don't know, I wasn't there, you weren't there. So it's just an opinion, a guess. But when you start to look at this stuff and, and decipher it, it's, it's unbelievable, the correlations, and it gives a defined aspect to our reality. And I think us as decoders, that's what we need to do to figure this out to ascent, to get the knowledge, and to put two and two together, because it's it's a one-man show, you know? The kingdom of God is within you. You gotta find it within yourself. You gotta have a little outside help, of course, because you gotta decode it, but I think we're getting there. But again, who decided upon serpent? If we go to the etymology of serpent, you'll notice it was, a, you know, it was derived from a Latin word and it was changed, but I'm not really concerned about the changing of it. I'm concerned about what we use as the spoken word, because we speak English. And we cast spells with English. Everything we say is a magic spell. That's why they say, how do you spell your name? When you say serpent, it's a broken down into two syllables. I think when you decode, you must do that. Serpent. And look at what it gives us for a breakdown. And this, is, this absolutely blew me freaking away. And I'll, show, I'll share with you what I, what I found. Serpent is a two syllable word. It's a 10 and a 22. And when we correlate those to the tarot, the tenth card is the Wheel of Fortune. Now again, we're talking about serpent. We're talking about the animal that deceived Eve in the book of Genesis. Right here, the serpent. And that's the very reason why I have the caduceus here and the symbol. The ancient hermetic symbol. Because it represents duality, right? The black and the white, the hot and the cold, the yin and the yang. Going up the ladder, Jacob's ladder. And then finally, lifting off. The wings would probably represent ascension, flying off to the next level. And that's what this crown is right here. The 33 layers to our vertebrae. Jacob's ladder, the penile gland, the crown. Off to the races, on to a new level of understanding. I think really that's what it means, but that's, that's we bring that back to serpent. Serpent, it's a 10 and 22, the 10 is a Wheel of Fortune, it's an androgynous card. It's a card of dualistic nature. It's showing the blue, the Krishna at top, and then the red devilish at the bottom. The black and the white, the yin and the yang. And you'll notice that at the bottom and the top, there's scribes taking notes. The as above, so below. And there's the cross embedded into this card. And all these other symbols. You know, the Yode Vahe is there. It's really fascinating. There's your snake representing, you know, the dualistic nature. The blue shift to the red shift. That's why cop cars have a blue right, blue and red lights. Because they represent the as above, so below. It's really interesting, this card right here. Dualistic energy going to the fool. Because the 
Sir Pent. Pent is a 22. The fool card is the 0 and the 22. He steps out. Onto the ledge. Onto the new beginnings. He's got his knapsack. He's got the sun behind his back. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what to expect. Stepping out into the world with the flower in his hand. Not a care in his not his care in his life. But carrying with him the dualistic nature. Is that not what the serpent gave us? The dualistic nature stepping out into the unknown? I mean, come on, look at the symbology to this. And then look at how the connections are to this. To the word serpent. Now when we look at the, the fool card, you know, here's Biddy Tarot. Each card has a double meaning to it. Look at what the fool card means at its upright position. Beginnings, innocence, spontaneity, a free spirit, and then the reversed is holding back, recklessness, and risk taking. The yin and the yang, every card has that. Isn't that what the serpent does? Did the serpent give us knowledge? Did we take his knowledge? Did we take his dualistic knowledge and give it to us on the level of manifest, uh, level of the fool? The level of building, because 22 equals a four, and four is the areas that we build upon. The north, south, east, and west, the four walls. Saturn's cube, right there. It's really interesting, isn't it? And then, you know, it gives its total energy to the 32, which is the germanium. The element germanium is the 32nd element. And I think it's tied to the element 31, gallium. And this one's very special, and we're going to get into that. But notice I highlighted 72.6. Why? Because I see the 9.6. And everyone knows Saturn's orbital speed is 9.6. Is this tied into Saturn? I mean, 32 equals a 5, and 5... Again, is half of 10. Five is our level of manifestation. Five is the level where we do all of our expressions. Fifth level of the chakra is the throat chakra. You know? We express ourselves on the fifth level. I mean, do you see how this ties in? It's crazy. Now, germanium has a gematria of 31, matching that of its predecessor, the 31st element. Gallium. And this is a very special element. Very special. And we're going to get into that a little bit more. 31, the mirror of 31 is the 13th. Now, look at it this way. If the 13th card is death, would this make the 31st element or the 31st number life? Life and death. 31, 13. It's very possible. That's what it could mean because it's its mirror, right? Now, when we tie these two elements up, 32 and 31, I believe these elements come in pairs, by the way. And what I mean by that is, I believe they come in pairs, possibly yin and yang in its higher form. You know, these come in pairs. They're all tied together. It's really interesting. Now, notice the 33rd element, 33, is arsenic. This is really a special one as well. It's got an atomic weight of 74. Or 74.9, which is could be the 11.9. Could be an 11.11 because 74 is 11 and 92 is 11. Could be read that way as well. But I just thought that was interesting. That, you know, the 33rd element has got an atomic weight of 74 and 11. And the next one down is 32, which is an atomic weight of 72. And 72 is the 72 names of God in the Tetragrammaton. It's really fascinating when you start to tile this stuff down. I mean, we can go even further. The Royal Society of Chemistry, they decided, look at all these elements and their photos, the pictures they decided upon. When you start to study these, ladies and gentlemen, man, it, they, these are specifically chosen. Why is arsenic have a crawfish or a, a, a prawn there? Well, if you go and look at the moon card, Look at what's down below at the very base of this card. It's the lobster or the crayfish or the prawn. Right here. Look at that. 33. Who chose that? Why did they choose it? Why did they choose that? Well, it's right there on the moon card. You know, and this may be representing the duality right here. You got the two pillars right here. The moon is, of course, matching our emotions. Are we matching the emotions of the higher divine source? Is this the, the 33 going towards descension? 
going towards descension, going down through the zigzag of life. Is that what this represents? I don't know. Now, germanium and gallium have a total numerology of 52. Notice gallium has a gematria of 21, matching that of Saturn. Interesting. I believe Saturn is a player in this, but I don't think he's the main boss. Not so far, anyway. I think the 69 is the king over Saturn. And I think that's the reason why gallium equals 21. I think Saturn definitely plays a role in our lives. He's the one that giveth and taketh. He's the ruler of time, but he has a maker as well. And I think the 69 is the maker of Saturn. It's kind of where I stand on that as of right now. Now, when we get into the 69, because it's a very special number, and the person that showed me that, John Petrie, thank you very much once again. Now, obviously, the orbital speed of Saturn is 9.6. We all know that, but John was really the one to show me the 69. Now, 69 is, in astrology, Cancer. And keep in mind that Cancer is in the summer months, when the full blossom of nature is taking place. This would indicate that this is when the 69 blossoms where the 69 is blossoming in the heat of summer. That's when everything is at its fullest potential. Is that what this is indicating here? And the reason why 69 is tied to cancer and cancer is in the summer months? I don't know, but it quite possibly could be. And I think there's a really good chance that is really how it's defined. Now, when we break down the number 69 or 96, whichever one you want to do, because either one's irreversible, we also get the mirror of the 52, which is these two elements here and I, that's why I think they pair up. I really think they pair up, but it's a 25, but 9.6 is a 79 and what's 79? 79 is gold. We're turning lead into gold, that's alchemy. And that's quite possibly the reason why 9.6 is tied to the 79 because 9.6 is gold. It's made of gold. Gold is the best element as far as value is concerned. You know, as far as being traded, I shouldn't say it's the most valued one because there's other ones that are more valuable, but it's a very well-known element, gold, you know, the gold standard. It wasn't the ruby standard, you know, it was the gold standard. So it's a very important element. Now look at what 69 breaks down into in atomic weights. The six and the nine is carbon and fluorine. I mean, you couldn't have picked a more fitting number in the six. We're all made of carbon. We eat carbon. We're carbon. And it matches up with the 9. It's a 12.011 plus 18.998. I mean, are you freaking kidding me what it adds up to? It's a 31. Matching up with that of gallium, which has an atomic weight of 69. Now, 69 is a very special number. Where else can we go with the 69? Well, I decoded this a while back. Some of you remember it. The origination of our reality. Talking about Jehovah and yod heh vah and the Tetragrammaton and... You know, and I specifically did a post on this in my blog, but you'll notice I started to tinker around with, you know, asking the Gematria cipher, asking it questions. And when you ask it questions in specific mannerisms and specific words, it starts to talk to you. At least I think so. And look, I mean, how do you spell your name? I'm asking it. How do you spell your name? Is, it, is this connected to, to a divine source? It's certainly looking that way. How do you spell your name? It's the 96. Again, we're talking 9669, right? I mean, look at what I have. You know, where do we go after we die? 96. Who wrote the Bible? 69. Who created numbers? 69. Who created language? 69. Does that mean that gallium created numbers and language? And I mean, is that what this is telling us? And then of course, excuse me, and then of course, you know, the word Jehovah in the English ordinal is 69 and then in the hebrew gematria it's a 96. i mean come on what are the odds ladies and gentlemen of these connecting like that these specific things logically look at it from that perspective the 69 is really really important it's not just the orbital speed of saturn i can guarantee you it goes much deeper than that it's not just all about the orbital speed of saturn that 69 is very very special I think this is the tetragrammaton. I've broken that down. Tetragrammaton equals 47, but when you break it down in atomic weights, it breaks out into 96, which again matches up with all these sinks. And I think the tetragrammaton, that runs our reality. 
And that's what we're kind of, we're worshiping. One way or the other, the Tetragrammaton runs the show in this reality. That's what I got so far. My name is Logan. This is Decoding Reality. Thanks for watching.